Hey, if you want to avoid some of the huge mistakes guys are making when it comes to overcoming erections, well stay tuned because today what I'm gonna do is break down some of those common mistakes and make sure you understand what you should do to avoid them. And hey, my name is Brian, AKA Uncle B, and for the last 20 years I've been the men's performance coach with African Fly, the liquid aphrodisiac, and as a coach, I see these mistakes happening all the time now, and more and more of these mistakes are coming out. So, what I wanna do specifically today is break down what it is that you need to understand about pills, medicines, testosterone replacement therapy, surgery, and even the new latest and greatest shockwave therapy. And hey, if you like what you hear, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so we can get some more of this information to you. And what I'm gonna do is break this down till it cannot be broken anymore. Now, on this channel, I'm always talking about natural ways to improve your erections. And it's really important because if you're trying to take shortcuts with pills and things like that, you're going to end up with the exact same problem because you haven't dealt with the underlying issues. But let's go ahead and talk about what these common mistakes are and the easiest one to talk about, of course, are those pills. Those gas station pills that you see all the time, well, they have some issues with them. The first is just the whole idea that the same place you're gonna go to pick up honey buns and sweet teas, that's where you're gonna go to pick up health pills. That's not a good idea at all. In those gas stations, you have pills that have been on the market for quite a while and they have some issues with the FDA. In fact, one of the pills called Rhino, and it started with Rhino, then it had Rhino Max, Rhino Gold, all these other pills are actually fake and the FDA is actually looking to get those off of the market. Their packaging says things that don't even make sense in terms of like, just take one pill and it'll last for 14 days or something like that. That's not the way your body works. These ingredients have been on the planet for less time than you have. So we really can't trust them. And for my athletes out there, some of those pills contain such things as DHEA, and if you're going through blood testing for performance enhancing drugs, that will show up, that will get you in trouble. People have reported having sweats, chest pains, and just plain feeling weird from taking these pills. Please be careful, in fact, don't take them. Let's go to the other classification of pills, which is the medications which are basically like, yeah, they went through FDA approval and they're still bad for you. We're talking about Viagra, Cialis, Levitra, these pills that basically perform by blocking off a chemical, by killing a chemical that is in your body that allows the blood flow to leave out of the penis. So therefore, blood that naturally goes into the penis can't get out, you get an erection. Well, there's some problems with that. For example, if these pills kill that chemical too good, you can end up with that four hour erection. And I know a lot of guys like, yeah, if I have a four hour erection, you know, I'll be wearing it out. Now nah, you'll be worn out because it's gonna be painful. So if you end up with a four hour erection, you have to go to the hospital so they can take a syringe, stick it into your Johnson and pull the blood out so you can actually get over that bad erection. There's a gentleman who actually took four Viagra pills because he wanted to perform great and he just ended up damaging his kidneys. Now, when it comes to these types of medications, there are side effects, just like those commercials where you see people running through the field while they list off that long list of things that are just gonna happen horribly for you. These include headaches, dizziness, nose trouble, visual issues, redness in the face, heart concerns, queasy stomach, decreased heart rate, and crazy enough, no libido. And <laughs> so, uh, not good, not good at all. All right, let's hop into surgeries because some guys are like, well, you know what? I'm not the size I wanna be. Let me go ahead and get that surgery. Let me break down what happens in that surgery. So basically what we're talking about is taking medical grade silicone gel and inserting it into the penis. So you have to cut it open, insert it into the penis, and that, of course, is gonna come with a long list of issues. First of all being the fact that your penis has been cut. Now you're dealing with possible infection issues and stitches coming apart, and even the implant itself breaking apart inside of your penis. And on top of that, it may not look the way that you were thinking. So you're ending up with something that looks really weird. 
And if it goes to that point, then you may want to have to go back in to have a second surgery on your penis. None of this is good at all. In fact, it's just painful. It's going to be painful for the following six weeks. You can't have sex. You can't masturbate. Having an erection would probably be painful as well. Now, of course, all surgeries come with risk. And one of the risks of this particular surgery is the cost, which is $15,000. You spend that much and end up with something that you don't want. Now let's talk about one of the favorite ones out there that's been around for a while, testosterone replacement therapy. Wow, sounds so great, except it's not. Because basically what you're doing is using exogenous testosterone. We're talking about synthetic testosterone that was formed outside of your body. Now you're gonna stick it inside of your body through needles or patches. And what ends up happening is your body does not recognize this as something that it ordered up. So it's gonna say, hey, your testosterone level just shot up to a level that it's not supposed to be at, so let's increase the estrogen production in in your body naturally. Now you're going back to the doctor saying, hey, my testosterone went up and then it came back down because of the estrogen, and so what should I do? Oh, I know, take some more testosterone. And then when that happens and you can eventually end up needing more estrogen to balance everything out, the problem is you end up doing this for the rest of your life. That's the first problem. The second problem, which is, you may become infertile. So the whole point of having an erection becomes sort of mute when you can't use it correctly. Mm. Now let's talk about that latest and greatest, the new one you may have heard all the rage on the sports talk radio shows and things like that, shockwave therapy. Uh, to be specific, low intensity shockwave therapy. And what is shockwave therapy? Basically, it's been used for years in the clinical settings for helping people repair tendons and, and bones and things like that. It's just a low intensity pulse that's just going through. And the thought process is, we're gonna use this on your penis just to wave it along there, just to get it to help with blood flow in your penis and things like that. Well. There's a couple of issues with that also. <laughs> the first being that, well, the first course takes three weeks for you to keep coming back and getting this treatment done. You have to take a three week break and then you come back uh, for another three week course for all of this to work. Then it'll take a good six months for it to actually finally work for you. And of course, you're gonna have to go back to do it again. And the reason for that is, is because it didn't deal with the underlying issues at all and your body doesn't work that way. Your penis is a part of your body. You just don't try to fix that by itself. That makes no sense. So the treatment plan is gonna take about three weeks to start with, and then you have a three week break, then you come back for three weeks more of this treatment. After all of that, the results usually show up in about a good six months, and a year after that, you're gonna to have to come back and do it all again because you did not deal with the underlying issues. So, shockwave therapy, it takes a long time, costs a lot of money, and it's not gonna work on a permanent basis. You just need to keep coming back. So, as I mentioned before, guys, it's all about going natural. It's all about using techniques that have already been here through nature to help us perform at our best. If you're gonna use these other techniques, please be very careful, please judge, research, make sure you know what you're doing because some of the results are permanent. So in conclusion, gas station pills are a thing of the devil. Viagra, Cialis, Levitra all kill a chemical that stops the blood from leaving out of your penis, still causing even more issues. Penis enlargement surgery can cost as much as $15,000 and has all the issues that comes along with having any surgery. Testosterone replacement therapy can make you dependent for life on this product and can also make you infertile. Shockwave therapy is expensive and temporary. And of course, none of these techniques address the underlying issues of low blood flow and low testosterone. So the question of the day is, have you tried any of these treatments and how did it work out for you? Please let us know in the comment section below. And also, of course, remember to check us out at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Thursday where I go over the information that we talked about earlier in the day. So if you like what you heard, go ahead, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so we can get some more of this information to you. And this is Uncle B saying, get your game up. Peace out.